The next thing that I want to look at in this final chapter is the node-based compositing and post-production system built right in Blender. So here we can see this car render that I've put together and all of the nodes that then make up this final render. And the other thing that I'm going to show you with this point is also the render layer system just very quickly. So to get started, actually, let's take a look at the render layers that make up this scene. So first of all, I have several different layers within my scene. And if we just switch this over to the 3D view, we can see them. So I have things from the actual car to the, the background, the windows, another set of windows, some lighting, additional lighting, one more set of lighting, and then finally a backlight and such. So I've got all my different pieces that then make up this car or and the scene for the car, all set up across various layers. And we can then see how those are set up inside the render layers here. So I have a key light scene that, and these should actually all be enabled right here. But basically I have several different render layers, a key light, a background, a backlight, a softbox, and fill light. And then each one of these is then designating what specific layers I want to render and what passes within those layers I want to render. So my key light is rendering just those specific layers that include the key light and the car. Then my background and such, you can see that I'm also excluding specific layers to make sure that those are not showing up in the render at all. And we've got everything from allowing us to render the, the Z normal UV pass, material index, ambient occlusion, shadows, uh, and then even breaking it down into diffuse and indirect lighting, and diffuse and indirect or direct and indirect glossy and transmission, and then also emission shaders and the environment itself. And so we've got these tools here to allow us to set up each individual specific thing. There is one or two things in here, by the way, that are not included in Blender 2.63. They're going to be in 2.64. So depending on which version that you're using on this disc, you will find both 2.63 and 2.64 beta since 2.64 has not yet been released at the time of this recording, but it's almost done. And so this feature specifically is in 2.64, but it was pretty essential in rendering this how I wanted to. And so that's what I've been using. Going back to then the actual node system in the node editor underneath the compositing nodes, you can see what the system is. So we've got a backdrop enabled so that we can see our view and we can move that around with alt middle click. And at any point in here, we can see the different layers. So we've got the car plus softbox. And if you happen to control shift click on these, it will immediately connect that node to the viewer node, which is what feeds the backdrop. So I can see my softbox, then my key light, then the backlight. I can see any one of the passes within these lights by just clicking on it again then. And so this allows me to then take any one of these. And in this case, I've only used a couple different passes to then put together the complete car. So I've got, you know, I'm adding a couple together, adding another one. Then I'm taking my ambient occlusion, multiplying that over the entire scene. Then I've got several different camera angles on this car. And in, in the case of the front view, my headlights are actually turned on. And so I have two separate node groups here that are composed of glare nodes and some additional color balance to then add in additional glare and streaks onto those headlights to make them look like they're turned on. Then additional uh, mixing between them on adding those all together. Then I'm going in, adding in the backdrop, uh, setting those you know alpha over to put them together. We've got another node group that makes up my vignette here and then just allows me to just drop that right in. So again, these are the node groups that I showed you in one of the previous videos. It allows me to take a set of nodes and basically create a more complex node out of those that then I can reuse at any point. And so this is basically just a, first of all, it's a lens distortion. Then I'm taking all the values, making sure they're greater than zero, blurring those out to then give me a nice kind of vignette effect and then I'm simply multiplying that over my original image. And then since I have several of those values exposed in here, I can easily put input at an image and the blur input and then adjust the strength directly from the group node to then give me my final effect. We've got some basic relighting in here using the normal pass. You can also see that we have reroute points, which again, this is another 2.64 feature that you can get. So to allow you to clean up your noodle system a little bit more and you can access these by just shift left click and dragging across the line and that will add that in and then finally going in some color balance doing some a very very subtle lens distortion and then finally an rgb curves and so this is 
uh, you know, just a sample of a little bit of the compositing. You know, you can use the node-based compositor either for doing post-production effects, and in this case, this is a, a little bit overdone, as you can see, but just something I put together pretty quick here. Uh, we've got a variety of nodes available. You can find them from the Shift-A or Add menu, and we've got inputting everything from render layers, inputting other images, textures, values, uh, uh, various color color controllers, filters, converters. So we've got a lot of different tools available. We also do have full green screening tools as well. Uh, and so this can be used both as a full compositing system and full post-production. So whichever one uh, works best for you for doing subtle image effects or actually composing things together. Uh, as an example, this is what they're using for all of the green screen uh, compositing for the uh, the live action footage on the Mango project that it, the Blender Foundation is currently working on at the time of this recording again. Uh, and so it's a fully, fairly full featured compositor. It does have in this latest version, it is much faster using OpenCL uh, integration to then speed up the compositing system and is also much more optimized. So between 2.63 and 2.64, there's a massive speed improvement. Uh, it's, it's something something extreme as you know 25 or 50 times faster I do believe I, I could have could be wrong but regardless if you compare 2.63 to 264 you'll find that it is significantly faster and so this is just one of the other things that's included directly in blender that allows you to keep a very tight-knit clean pipeline when you're working on your images.